Before we get to the movie, I didn't want to talk about the slap. Yeah. Unless we had something to say about it that hasn't been said already. And I think I do. Okay. I want to sing the praises of the unsung hero of the slap, Sean Combs. <laughs> he came on right after it happened, and man, was he flustered. <laughs> <laughs> to see a guy who's built his career on being cool, mm -hmm. to see him just totally out there, deer in the headlights, and he really handled it like a pro. He pointed directly at the elephant in the room. He got everyone kind of feeling more at ease and saying, we got more show to do, so let's do it. And I was really proud of him in that moment. Not that my pride means anything to P. Diddy. We were on vacation for this. We had to put the kids to bed. Christina falls asleep. I go back out to watch the Oscars, and I'm like, Everything seems to have changed here. In commercials, I go over to Facebook. What's Team Will and what's Team Chris? <laughs> you were just like Amy Schumer. <laughs> yeah, I was. Like you were changing out of your Spider-Man costume and you missed the whole thing. <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Thank you for joining me here in the basement once again to watch our top secret movie, which I have right here in this envelope. That's the premise of the show. I hope you've brought your sense of adventure, because tonight we are going to be explorers. Oh, hey, these guys, my old pals from when I was a kid. Childhood pals. Released in 1985 and directed by Joe Dante, Explorers stars Ethan Hawke and Basement Hall of Famer River Phoenix in both of their big screen debuts. And this guy too, he's in it. It also features Basement alum Robert Picardo and in his fifth appearance on our show, Basement Hall of Famer Dick Miller. Despite positive reviews, Explorers flopped at the box office, a victim of all kinds of bad timing. There was an executive shakeup at Paramount which caused it to be rushed into release. It premiered the day before the Live Aid concert and nine days after Back to the Future. We're finally watching a movie with Ethan Hawke, your former nemesis. My former nemesis. I've made amends. We got together. We had beers. I was like, River. I'm sorry, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't start out well. I don't like beer. <laughs> One thing I do know about this movie is it's about two kids who build a spaceship. And so this gift will allow you to build a spaceship. Oh, a space derby kit. Or as the English would say, a space derby kit. They invented the language. We can't argue. That's a spaceship right there. We have uh, these two balsa wood chutes here. I feel like there's some pieces missing from this. This I can put in my braces. <laughs> <laughs> so put on your sneakers and ride your bike on over to the old leather couch where we're going to blast off into space with the movie Explorers. <laughs> Space. The eventual frontier. And if the spaceship they build malfunctions, they'll be exploders. Speaking of which, Ben is dreaming. He's flying around through the clouds and he's having visions of circuitry and symbols. Hey, explorers, Tron much? <laughs> he calls up his buddy Wolfgang. I had that dream again. I'm riding down everything. The next day at school... <laughs> Steve Jackson is beating the crap out of Ben. I don't like people calling me stuff when I don't know what it is. Is that Bill Paxton? <laughs> I was just gonna say, it's a young <laughs> Bill Paxton. Why are you such a wanker, Chet? I get off on it. <laughs> this guy's watching too, and he gives Jackson a kick. That's Darren. Kick his ass. <laughs> kick his ass. I, Jackson, command it. <laughs> ben catches up with Darren. Eh, Steve Jackson's a jerk. Always designing those games like Car Wars and Toon. He's a real jerk, that 80s era gaming entrepreneur Steve Jackson. And they become friends. You want to see a dead body? Do you want to go underground and find a pirate ship? We can do any of these things. They go to Wolfgang's house. His parents are German and they're very eccentric. But down in the basement, he's got it going on. Yeah, I took the things you drew, and I've made a computer out of it. I love you. I must kill you. <laughs> so we can be together. <laughs> I don't get it. It's programming itself. Come on, have it draw the turtle. <clears throat> Do you remember the turtle? No, I don't remember the turtle, man. <laughs> the turtle you drew. It's asking for coordinates on X. The turtle would move around and draw things. How did you dream this? 
guess I'm just that kind of guy. That was a totally Ethan Hawke read on that line. <laughs> the kids already got it. <laughs> yeah. There's holes in all these. Computers don't like books. That's the entire basis of Amazon.com. Yeah, okay. This book's good, but it's got plot holes. Is a joke I did not make. I'm not sure the bug bomb was down here somewhere. This is all shiza. I do not like it. Wolfgang, get to the chopper. <laughs> it's an electrically generated... Force. By typing in coordinates, I can make it move anywhere in three dimensions. Well, I can just modulate the coordinates and the electrodes and poof, there, now you can see it. It's a sphere. How come we can see it now? Power modulation. You know, gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> the cat steps on the keyboard and the ball goes crazy, tearing up the entire place. The next day, they take their computer out into the field. So what'd you tell them about the basement? Told them we were watching movies down there and then talking about them. They said, that's no premise for a show. <laughs> what, another show on the internet where two white guys talk about movies? <laughs> they turn it on. The sphere pops into being and Wolfgang gets trapped in it. He's going through the air. He's going through the ground. And he lands in a tree. He found some things out about that sphere. It's airtight and no inertia. So if the sphere was going at 100 miles an hour and it crashed into something, the person inside wouldn't get hurt. We can use the sphere to do anything. They spy on a girl in her bedroom. Lori, who I, Ben, have a crush on. You mean we can use computers to stalk girls from school? <laughs> Look, she does homework just like me. We can fly anywhere in this thing. Let's build a craft. I know where we can get parts for our ship. There's this junkyard that I like to go to. Here's a junkyard dog that I've developed a trick to get past him. He likes gum. I'm a talking dog. Hello, guys. Welcome to my <laughs> junkyard. If you need any batteries, they're over there behind the old Hudson. <laughs> we got through a dog scene without me mentioning snossages. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo me. It's an old tilt-a-whirl cage. We can use that as the basis for our ship. Let's steal it. These kids are goddamn thieves. Junk thieves. They build their spaceship. Tonight, we launch. They do a systems check, and they're off into the air. How do you feel like we're moving at all? Great suspension on this thing. Yeah, suspension of disbelief. It feels like a dream, doesn't it? I never have dreams. Oh, everybody has dreams. I don't. Okay, good talk. <laughs> Give us your gum. Or snossages. <laughs> I was not going to say it. <laughs> they go by the drive-in theater, because that's where all the action's happening on Friday night. They fly around. See them flying there? That's what they call a traveling mat. How do you know? Because I'm a young Joe Dante surrogate. They're spotted by a helicopter from the sheriff's department. But they zip away and are not caught. Is Darren always stoned that he's not noticing how amazing things are? He's kind of like, oh, my Walkman. I, you either notice how amazing everything is or you don't notice. That's if my recollections are correct. That night, all three of them have a dream. Someone is sending them messages. They decide they're going to take a second flight. The sheriff man is flying around in the helicopter. He spots their craft. He goes snooping around. He finds a jacket in there with Ben's name and address. It's just my size. I'm not a large man, but I'm virile. He goes to Ben's house and confronts him. Ah, get away from me! Run, Ethan, run! Be swift like the bird whose name you bear. <laughs> and he gets there just in time to see their spacecraft take off. Nice going, kid. Off they go into the wild black yonder of outer space. Oh, yeah, hey, let me check it out the moon and then, wow, what are you looking at? Or whatever they're talking about. I can't stop thinking about what's up there. I mean, it could be pure energy. Dun, 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 dun. Pure energy. <laughs> <laughs> the computer starts going kind of weird. I mean, look at it. It's complete nonsense. Who loaded the Wingdings font into the computer? It's as if something is taking over their ship. It's this spaceship. They get tractor beamed on board. They get out of their craft. Everybody falls down a tube and they get separated. 
Super happy fun slide. <laughs> Wolfgang and Ben are together. They're walking over here. They're walking over there. Yep, the kid still has that baked energy. <laughs> Just like, wow, this is so far out. Ben and Wolfgang are chased by this big space spider. <laughs> Little plunger comes out. Exterminate! Exterminate! <laughs> that frisks them really intimately. Really checks them out. Like, checks them out. These are teenage boys. Spider thing. Spider thing. Handsy, grabby, spider thing. Keep it in your pants, space spider. <laughs> ben and Wolfgang get separated. Ben finds Darren. They see this creature, and they chase after it. Hey, come on out. We're not going to hurt you. You know how that goes. We come in peace. Great. Now try how do we get back to our ship. No, no, just give him a minute. Yeah, you're seeing an alien life form, Darren. <laughs> Be either afraid or intrigued. What's up, Dad? What? It's up. up. Doc? Doc? They find Wolfgang. He's hanging out with this lady alien. And just talking about space stuff. Do you have a girlfriend? I'm only 13, but I am River Phoenix, so <laughs> I have several. And they're all much older than me. Yeah, I was raised in this really weird sex cult. Funny story, that. Uh, yeah, we live mostly in the jungle because that way the authorities couldn't find my parents. <laughs> Need to fortify myself for what's coming up next. <laughs> yeah, you better. The aliens. Okay, the aliens. All right. I'm Ben. Uh, me, Ben. Me, Tarzan. No! I don't like him. At this point, the movie gets funny. <laughs> anyway, my wife gave me a new car. It's called a uh, Rolls Can Hardly. <laughs> That's right. Rolls down one hill can hardly get up the next. <laughs> And it goes on for quite a while. The amazing! Yeah. I hope, I hope this part of the movie isn't... Okay, can you stop doing that, please? I'm trying to... I think I floated out of my body for a little while. Get away, son, you bother me! I have to admit I lost a little patience with it. You know what? I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. I am not unmuting until these fuckers are gone. Mm -hmm. This is unprecedented. No, no, I did this during weekend. Yeah. The French movie weekend, I muted it. Oh man, hitting mute was the best decision I've made all week. You know, the... He's got a saxophone now. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have to listen to it. They've been watching our TV. And that's how they have absorbed human culture. And they've also seen alien monster movies and they're scared of earth because they know that if they go down there they're going to get killed by the humans the mistrustful humans so they thought we're going to find these kids who get us we're going to give them this technology this ability to come into space so they can come and meet us and we can show them that we're nice but a bigger spaceship shows up this huge monster comes out and he's like baga 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 <laughs> Darren's just like... <laughs> Darren figures it out. I'm telling you, it's their father. They're kids. And they took this spaceship from their father and they went on a joyride through space and they found Earth. I think it's time for you guys to get going. Yes! Let's exchange totems. The aliens see a picture of Lori, the girl that Ben has a crush on. And they beam a little something into her dreams as well. The kids go back to Earth now. They're flying around. The computer goes out. The field goes out. The ship falls down into the lake where it sinks, never to rise again. And later on in school, she passes him a note saying, have a nice trip. So she knows what's going on. The aliens got into my head too. Now I want to show you my boobies. <laughs> ben looks at his thing. He looks, he looks at his space thing. Oh my god, I just killed everyone. 
I totally did a Thanos snap. <laughs> and he goes into a dream. Now the three boys and Lori are flying through the air. Now they're all explorers. I have never in 240 some episodes of this show gone so far from love to hate on one movie. <laughs> And I wouldn't say I loved it at the beginning, but I was definitely churned the pants off me. Yeah. And it really brought back those memories of childhood and watching movies like The Last Starfighter and E.T. and things like that. Yeah. But, God damn it, I hated this movie at the end. It just scuttled its own ship. There was no sense of wonder in this entire thing. When they're going through the spaceship, they should either be rushing to see what the next wonder is, or they should just be stopping and looking at one thing trying to figure it out, and then going on to the next thing. But they're kind of like, yeah, just walking around. Emotionally, that's the entire movie. Do you feel like maybe that was an intentional tone? He was deliberately going for not wonder. Sort of like when you bring your kids to a museum, and they're seeing all these amazing paintings, and just going, yeah, that's fine. So he was the one guy who <laughs> went to see E.T., and he thought, <laughs> no. You meet an alien, you see a spaceship taking off, you just be like... Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out myself. I just want to go watch TV. Speaking of TV, there were a couple of characters who really liked TV in the movie. And you know what they didn't have in common with their human buddies? What's that? Their human buddies didn't watch TV. They watched them. old movies. Yeah. yeah. And then they make these aliens. You know... Damn baby boomers who are like, you know what was the best time ever? It was from 1955 to 1963, specifically November 22nd. And then they make these movies, each one of them, Dante and Spielberg and Zemeckis. Come on, worship our childhood. And we're like, we're trying to have our own childhoods. Can't you guys are pretty okay at watching movies? Yeah, watch movies about us going back to the 50s. What do these boomers do? They get 70 years old. And they're like, things just weren't good, aren't good now. We want to go back to the 50s. And then they vote for Trump, and then there goes democracy! <laughs> Jesus Christ. The whole movie felt rushed. Everything felt half-baked. <clears throat> yeah. No, nothing felt developed enough. Those three kids, they didn't have distinct personalities. They're not like the four kids in Stand By Me. You didn't get the sense that you knew these kids or that you wanted <clears throat> to know them. Yeah, and they were close to doing it. Yeah. Darren comes from a... Broken home situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yet, that's all we get. Where's Darren coming from? This guy who's been a loner, clearly, his entire life, and then he finally gets friends. Yeah. And that there's no blossoming that comes there. The movie is too much about the bubble. It's like if Stand By Me was all about the dead body. No, it's, it's the dead body is a catalyst for doing something for these four kids mm -hmm. to have a journey and change. Yes, the dead body makes them alive. I can tell it was bad editing. Look at the scene where the ball is tearing apart the basement. This should be an amazing comedy sequence. But it wasn't. And we know that Joe Dante can give us that. He gave us the destruction of an entire town in Gremlins. And it was amazing and horrifying and hysterical all at the same time. And I think the key has to do with editing. Mm -hmm. That he didn't let moments go on long enough. Or they went on too long and they're just herky-jerking across. Sure. Again, so much of the movie. that The wrong things were left in and the right things were left out. The best part of the movie for me was when they first got out in the spaceship and they were wandering around. I thought that was really cool. What are they going to see next? What's the next room going to look like? It wasn't good storytelling, and yeah. it wasn't a good bit of filmmaking, but I liked that part. I like the let's put the spaceship together sequence. Yeah, that was That's, nice. I, I love stuff like that because that was what I always thought I could do if I knew the right people when I was a kid. Yeah. The Latka boys could do it. If I hung out with them more, we would have made a spaceship. So Robert Picardo did play three roles in this. He played the role of Star Killer in the fake movie that they were watching at the drive-in. He was the young alien who we hated and the old alien who was the father who we also hated. I like Robert Picardo. I like him too, but this ain't going to get him into the Hall of Fame. No. Okay, Dick Miller. He's great. He's always Dick Miller and you always like watching him. I have an interesting story about Dick Miller. I saw him in an early Roger Corman film, of course, called The Terror. Yeah. With uh, Jack Nicholson. It was the most astounding bit of miscasting I've ever seen. Dick Miller played a French butler. 
He's that good that he did it okay. We wanted more from his character, I think. He's supposed to be Peter Coyote in E.T. Yeah. Except for the fact that he's so gruff that he's scary. I wish there was more of him trying to break through to the kids. I'm not mad at you. I'm not going to get you in trouble. I want to be you. Right. Do you think Dante loves the suburbs or hates them? He always makes movies about them, and then he always destroys it. The burbs, gremlins. I don't think he does it maliciously, though. I think it's in fun. I think it's more like, my memories are my playground, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to get outrageous with them. I love It's a Wonderful Life. I love War of the Worlds. What if the aliens arrived in Bedford Falls? Yeah, exactly. Okay, Explorers. We have explored it. We're not going to go back. We are, though, going to go to a little feature we like to call Seen It. Seen It. Our theme today, appropriate for the movie we just saw, is the 80s cable roundup. Movies that we watched on cable in the 80s. Mercedes Downey writes, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Seen It. Seen It. This might be the greatest cast of any movie Ever. Two Oscar winners. Only two? Well, uh, Sean Hen and Forrest Whitaker. Nicolas Cage is in it. Oh, shit. Yeah, he is. I love how it captures the blurring of cliques in high school. Mm-hmm. So often, we're the jocks and we're the nerds and, you know, and everything. But in this, you have the coolest guy in the school. The ticket scalper guy. The ticket scalper guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he is friends with the nerdy usher... And it makes sense. Just like in high school. This is how cliques are in real life, not how they are in the movies. Yeah. Where everyone is so sharply divided. Mm -hmm. I am really amazed that Sean Penn wasn't typecast as a comic actor after this movie. Because he's so funny. Everything he does is funny in that movie. I don't think he really did any comedy after Fast Times. No. I'm not certain if he smiles until Milk. (laughs) And I would say that Spicoli and Milk are his two best performances. Matthew Stewart. Have you guys seen Weird Science? A personal favorite from my pubescent years for obvious reasons. Seen it. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand I have seen it? I don't love the movie. No, it's not great. Has typical John Hughes black people in it. They're all sitting in a club. Every damn night? (laughs) On the telephone? Yes. And, uh... I think of... I think of that quote probably twice a month. (laughs) Every month, ever since I've seen it. I think of that man saying every damn night (laughs) on the telephone. I think that all the time. I don't know why. I don't know why either. I don't remember math class, (laughs) but I remember that line. I will say that, uh, Kelly Brock... Kelly LeBrock. Kelly, which is French for Kelly the Brock. She might be the platonic ideal of hot 80s woman. Yeah. David Cotera writes, Spies Like Us, please and thanks. Seen it. Seen it. You know what I remember about Spies Like Us? No. The song Spies Like Us. By Sir Paul McCartney. Co-written by Elvis Costello. They wrote a few songs together. And oh, yeah. It's a kind of stupid song it's basically the movie kind of a stupid song with a couple of geniuses in the middle of it chef spiral seen it footloose seen it yeah not only have i seen footloose but i participated in the footloose remake project this was this happened many years ago a couple of people from channel 101 decided they were going to remake the entire movie of footloose because they were because there was a big hollywood remake of footloose that was coming out And so they were going to kind of scoop it. Yeah. So they farmed out all of these scenes to all these different filmmakers, like 20 or 30 different filmmakers. And we got a scene to shoot. It was the scene in the church where Lithgow confronts his daughter. And we shot it in an actual church here in Madison. (laughs) And here's a clip. Ariel, I cannot let this dance happen. Fred McCormick made a lot of people stop and think. I object to that kind of music. I think you know why. Because people fornicate to it. I never said that. That's what you told the church board. That was not meant for your ears. That's Tona on camera for that, and that's me (laughs) playing John Lithgow. I think maybe on the episode of Unboxing that's coming out this coming Friday, I'll put the entire scene on that so you can see the whole thing. (laughs) Because it's a bit long. But we probably should talk a little bit about Footloose, the original movie. Yeah, yeah. 
Chris Penn dancing. Chris Penn dancing. And that's a great montage because you can really see him learning how to dance. There's a place you can go where you can really rediscover your sense of wonder, and that's our website, welcome to the basement show.com. All of our episodes are there, and there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on and make a one time or rolling monthly donation to support our show. Yes, people do it. People such as Ben, who says, Thank you guys for keeping the show going. I can't believe how long it's been. 10 years! I'm 26 now and started watching you guys when I was a teenager. You helped me through some dark times and I'm truly thankful. We're truly thankful for you, Ben. Yes, yes we are. You can also watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. You can see more Craig and Matt chat and uh, other shenanigans as well. Thanks for watching Explorers with us. <laughs> and now, take a look at this. Ethan Hawke actually did this exact same scene again in the Paul Schrader film First Reformed. <laughs> I shit you not. I did. <laughs> Tonight, we launch.